Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. Um, hopefully you're sitting around home with nothing else to do. Well, I guess the roads aren't truly as bad as, I don't know. You know, it's been a weird week weather-wise, right? So but we're just glad you're watching. And um, sorry, we had to cancel yesterday's episode. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll get around. It was a buck groundhog day. So now it's a little bit I'll have to wait a year. <laughs> Sorry, you guys can just anticipate what's happening next year. Anyway, I uh, have some new friends here as our guests today on Trail Talk. And this is Casey. And I completely went blank on your name already. Brenda. Brenda. Okay. And Brenda. Wow. I, this could be such a good episode. I can already tell. <laughs> Casey and Brenda are here and they are from Crossed Arrows. Um, this is a, a slide Casey prepared for, so Dirt Matters is going to be a part of what he talks about. But Crossed Arrows um, is the name of an alpaca ranch, and they have a lot of other things going besides just raising alpacas that we're going to be talking about. But their, their ranch is, you guys are east of Duncan, out by Velma, yeah. is that right? Okay, and um, so anyway, they are... Uh, really getting rolling on their business and I'm just very excited. I met, well, I went into their new storefront in the, um, uh, what they call that, Duncan Tower, the, the Duncan Tower downtown. Um, I went shopping in, uh, around Christmas and went in the storefront and started talking to um, the super nice lady you have working in there. She is Lisa. Uh, she is great. And um, I just was so interested. I said, would you have the owners get in touch with me in case he called? And here we are. So welcome to Trail Talk, guys. I cannot wait to find out all about Crossed Arrows. So um, just first of all, Casey, are you from this area? Yes, I'm born and raised here outside of about 10 years when I was in college and, and lived in the Oklahoma City, Norman area after that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Moved back here in 2010. Been here since then. So. Okay, so have you had alpacas since no. then? The alpacas <laughs> is, is on her side. That's oh, where, okay. She started with the alpacas. And that's, that's, she's the alpaca expert. The so. alpaca expert. <laughs> okay, so then what is your role? A little bit of everything right now. Okay. So we have cattle and some sheep and goats also uh -huh. on the ranch. And so we're trying to start selling our beef direct to consumers. And oh, so okay. that is, okay. that's my main piece of the puzzle right now is trying to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And along with some of the other pieces that we're doing with rotational grazing and the regenerative farming that we're trying to try to Awesome, work awesome. So do you, um, so, do you sell it any of your beef here in Duncan? We've sold shares to this point, and uh -huh. we're looking at trying to start selling individual cuts in a in a storefront market also. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, are you familiar with Thinkability yes. Market? Yes. Because they have the, well, they're a food, they have Correct. their food hub. Yes. But then they, at the store on Main Street where they move the market down there, they also sell you know, local goods. Local yes. goods, yes. Yeah. Do you have anything there or are you kind of looking at? We actually are going to put these in there. Oh, okay. One of their guys comes out and makes these dryer balls for us. Oh, yes. so, oh yeah. awesome. You, so you guys are um, employing some thinkability uh, Wayne, clients. Wayne Eubanks uh -huh. works for us and Wayne makes our dryer balls. And so we will uh, have some there and uh, have a picture of Wayne and he's Probably my he's a very dedicated employee. Oh, we just yes. love him. Today. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so great. I love that. And um, so Brenda, are you from this part of the country too? Yes, I was born in Marlow, and I grew up here in Duncan. Um, I actually taught school. Oh, okay. At Duncan High School. I taught math. Uh -huh. um, but most of, most of the kids I taught are like grandparents now. <laughs> um, so I did that for about seven years. Uh -huh. And then I went to work for the federal government. I started at Fort Sill, went to work at Lockheed, then I went to the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And so I was out there probably 29 years oh. and, or I retired and I've been back about a little over two years. And Casey's came to work for us uh, about a year ago. Yep. 
Okay, awesome. So I got distracted when you said you were at the Pentagon. So were you there the day of I was actually out, I was actually outside the building, but uh but every you know one of the uh probably the nicest uh guys that I went to school with uh, an operations research school, a lieutenant colonel, he was consumed in the fireball. And so it was, uh, but I was probably about, as a crow flies, about five miles from the oh, Pentagon when okay. it hit. Okay. So it was, yeah. Wow. But still, you were right there. And wow, my goodness. <sighs> that's a, that's a, that's another conversation, I would, I'm sure. Uh, okay. So you came back and you bought alpacas. Actually, I had, we got into alpacas. Um, I have one child. Uh huh. Casey's cousin. Uh -huh. uh, we call it my daddy called him Mr. P because I he's an only child. Oh, okay. And so my only child uh, joined the army. Uh, my husband's retired military, but he joined the army and deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, he was twenty, I mm -hmm. believe, or twenty one. And I was in the Pentagon, and so where I worked, I worked in operations. So I was seeing all the stuff coming in, all classified stuff, and and so it was really hard on this mama, the golden child, as we call him. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, long story short, we went to an alpaca seminar, my husband and I, and we bought two alpacas that day, and we boarded them there in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So every weekend, I'd go out and see my two alpacas. And by the way, both of them died uh, in September of last year. Oh, after the hot summer. Well, they were they were, uh, oh. and our oldest one died uh, about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. Black oh. Beauty was uh, should have been nineteen in May. So, but uh, long story short, that's why we got into alpacas, uh, mm -hmm. and now we have fifty four something like that. Oh, wow. Well, we have about eight that are pregnant uh, for next year, mm -hmm. and then in the spring we'll breed some more. They're uh, alpacas are, I like them for many reasons. They're uh, very gentle animals. Mm -hmm. They're easy on the uh, soil. They're also, they're fiber, which you felt this right here is a mm -hmm. melted sheet we produced. Mm -hmm. It's 80% uh, alpaca and 20% merino wool. This one over here is 100% alpaca and you can just feel oh. the fineness. You can. The merino wool makes it feel a little more dense. Yes, and, uh, and what it does, heavier. it makes it heavier. It also gives it more, um, what it, we like to say, uh, it, it'll hold its shape better. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. So anyway, that's how we got into alpacas. And uh -huh. eventually we moved them out here before I retired. Uh, Casey's brother, Kobe, we'll give him a plug. <laughs> Kobe actually worked for us and, and he managed the ranch. It was just alpacas and we bought a few cow, cows then. And we have red Aberdeen Angus. Okay. And so, and we have uh, four sheep, baby doll sheep, and then mm -hmm. we have one goat. And that's a story for another time. We started with five. That's like a good goat story. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so anyway, that's how we got into alpacas. Okay. And moved them here, and then I eventually retired. We also started a fiber mill. We have a working fiber mill that takes, oh, I meant to bring fiber. Uh, we, it takes it from the fiber off the animal, and then we go through and we make these products you see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a few questions I have. So those first two alpacas... Um, how old were they when I bought them? No, well, how long did they live? They were both, they were 17. So what's the general, the average lifespan, would you say? In, in ideal conditions, uh -huh. which Oklahoma is not for, yeah. uh, because it gets hot, hot here. Uh -huh. Uh, they say they can get in their 20s. What I'm seeing here in Oklahoma, they're usually anywhere from, you know, 18 years of age. That's, okay. So, so when you are buying alpacas, are you anticipating them to produce, like, does age affect how much, uh, mm -hmm. what do you call the, do you call it wool? I call it fiber. Fiber, how much fiber, does that affect the amount of fiber they produce? Yes, as they age, they produce less fiber and it gets coarser over time. So one of the things we keep records, I'm 
I was an operations research analyst and a strategist at the Pentagon, but I like my data. Mm -hmm. So we collect a lot of data to see as what you're shooting for is to breed to get these animals that maintain uh, fine fiber throughout the years mm -hmm. as they age mm -hmm. and they're consistent. And so there, you don't have uh, my two ladies that work in the fiber mill left, Amy and Ashley, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, they are uh, getting their uh, master sorter and grader certificates. So they can, you bring them fiber in the, and, but you bring fiber in and we'll go through it and we'll say, oh, this is, this is grade two, this is grade three. And so, and if you put the grades together, then you'll have a very consistent uh, product. The fiber is consistent. Uh -huh. Therefore, the product will be a better quality product. And so is there a market for the more coarse fibers? Like, is there a, you know, are there uses for that? This, okay. So we're going to make, we're going to start making insoles. Uh -huh. These are felted insoles. These are all alpaca. This is a coarser, this is probably a five Mm -hmm. This six. is all alpaca, just like that. Yes. So it is significantly it's, it's coarse. coarse. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. But Easy to feel that. Yeah. One thing that alpaca, uh, all natural fibers, whether it be alpaca or you know goat sheep, whatever, but alpaca, uh, it's able to whisk moisture mm -hmm. away. So if you've got sweaty feet, it'll whisk it away. Mm -hmm. That's why people like to wear alpaca socks. And because it keeps your uh, feet warm, I wear them in the summer because mm -hmm. it whisks the moisture away from your feet. Mm -hmm. Running socks yeah. often are made of wool, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's because of that it we'll wicks that up. off your feet. Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, okay, so um, so how many did you say you have now? I think we, I think we have fifty four. Fifty. I haven't counted lately. Okay. Oh, I'm only supposed to have fifty. That's uh -huh. what I tell people. My husband said I had to quit at fifty, so I just say we have about fifty. About fifty. <laughs> That's about, yeah. Yeah. She means that too. It's about fifty. <laughs> it's always a little give or take, you know. Uh, so. Uh, how old do they have to be before they you're able to start? harvesting or I guess you it's a shearing process I'm guessing yeah we shear once a year okay and uh Priya which is a baby alpaca uh their fiber uh you usually shear it uh, so it can grow out because you get rid of the um uh, as you know when they're uh in the sack uh the it, the uh -huh. yeah, it, yeah. It, they're very tender on the tips uh -huh. um so if you don't share them, you share once a year. The Crea fiber usually isn't that good. It'll break. Uh, but the next group, next time you share it, will be the finest fiber that animal will produce. The very first. Uh -huh. So you can like ask for more. You can put a higher price on things that are produced by that? Is there like a, a, a name for that it's, in the marketplace? Well, it's called, the finest alpaca fiber is called baby alpaca. Okay. It has nothing to do with it being a baby. It just means it's very fine. And, okay. um, but it's usually baby alpacas that are producing it. Uh -huh. It's uh, like that first year. -ing. Right. And so you go from grade zero, which is the finest, to grade six. Okay. And and we also have what we call compost. So if it's pretty mm -hmm. bad, mm -hmm. I have to watch my language. If it's mm -hmm. pretty bad stuff here. We're keeping it Disney. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we're keeping it Disney rated here. So it's, just so y'all know. <laughs> so we tell people and we use it for crevices and, when, and we put it in there because it'll decompose in three months. Like in the ground? Yeah. Let's, okay. Okay. And we're thinking, we're looking at different ways to maybe use that, that maybe um, like do felted sheets. Not, this is better stuff, but, you know, do it. Uh -huh. And you can uh, put seeds on it and just. I was just out. thinking about something like that. And and that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, we've got, it holds heat really well. We'll uh -huh. put these in the well house and stuff like that, too, to keep the heat in the, okay. in the well house, okay. keep it from freezing, different things like that. Uh -huh. and that wow. it's used for that way every piece of it gets used 
Mm -hmm. don't have to worry about no waves. Current. No waves. No waves. So um how like how big is an adult alpaca? They um usually they're they have long necks mm -hmm. and their necks are usually I'm five foot three and three quarters. I think I'm five foot three now, but uh she's she's so close. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so th their heads are about even with my height uh -huh. and their uh, backs, their weathers hit me about the hip. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're, they're not huge and they're not long. No, no. And they weigh about 150 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and so they're not, uh, their feet are padded. So if they kick you, which I've been kicked, uh, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it jars you, but it doesn't mm -hmm. won't break anything. Right. They uh people always ask, do they spit? Uh llamas will spit on you. Oh yeah. I've but, been I've been yeah <laughs> the recipient of llama spit a time or two. But I tell people, oh no, they don't spit, but don't get near Boomer. <laughs> Boomer will spit on you because Boomer was a bottle fed baby. Oh okay. and he has no boundaries. And so we tell people, don't get near <laughs> Boomer. Mm -hmm. And then because he's the type that he'll kind of act like he's going to love on you then they'll spit in your face mm -hmm. and but for the most part females if they think their baby's in danger then they will but so it's like a defense mechanism correct okay okay interesting and you said they have padded feet are they like camel toes or yeah. something they're from the camel family okay okay that's that is cool too and so what's when they um give birth is it typically a single do they have yes they, they do not have, if they get pregnant with twins, they'll abort. Uh, really? And just one of them or they'll lose both? A lot of times they lose both of them. They're anatomically not built to carry twins. Really? Mm -hmm. That is very interesting too. Their gestation period is 11 and a half months. So okay. if they lose a baby, then they're a year behind. Right. Uh, right now we have... Uh, I think we have 13 that are due next year. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, after this podcast, I'm going to uh, Tennessee to pick up two alpacas that we had bred to a champion and out there and bring them home. Okay. And so that would be a champion of what? Uh, we, there are alpaca shows, uh -huh. just like horse shows and right. everything else. Right. And they're uh, in the sire that we're breeding to has won multiple banners in the okay okay but like what is uh what makes one a champion is it their their, their fibers, fibers? okay it's, it's all about the fiber and their confirmation what is that confirmation is how they're built so that's okay. and they're usually 50 50 and but you know some judges have a, a tendency to do more than the other uh they're if you look at an alpaca they're like a square Okay. A perfect uh -huh. confirmation. Uh -huh. Their head should lean back. If you were to turn it back on it on its back, uh -huh. should be two thirds of the way back. Uh, so if it, the neck's too long or too short, mm -hmm. if they're not square, if their uh, hind legs are higher, it, little things like that they look for. And is that being uh, so? I showed sheep. Oh, okay. uh, what? Well, yeah, and you know that was mostly about the meat production you know they were looking at, at the the weathers at least you know they were it was all about how how did they compare to each other as you know as far as if we butcher this lamb you know what are we going to get the best cut you know but do you, alpacas are not about the meat so why what does it matter <laughs> or do, are there, they, there is some go ahead, uh, places that eat alpaca uh -huh. so i mean it is a a viable option in certain places. I okay. Mean, there are places in the United States that that uh, there are all bag of branches that, that sell it, it, for the meat. meat. Yeah. It tastes like sweet beef. I've okay, actually, so it doesn't taste like chicken. No. That's good. No. No. <laughs> it tastes like sweet beef. Uh huh. It's very lean. Lean uh -huh. alternative. It's a, uh -huh. a lean alternative to beef. Okay. And that is something we'll be looking at as well. That's. Casey's job. Okay. I, I get to do the oh, aren't these cute? <laughs> right. And, uh, and so, then I always go, well, but you can't eat them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, I'm curious what difference does it make how long their neck is or, you know, if they're square bodied or not, if you're just shearing 
the grade the fiber, the fiber on the grade of the fiber in that area. It depends. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah, the different I, parts of the body produce a different grade of fiber. The blanket is the best. Okay. Across uh -huh. the back. Uh -huh. The neck is what we call the seconds. And thirds are the legs and the belly. And okay. those are your worst fibers. Mm -hmm. Those usually is that what this where this would come from? It depends. Sometimes the bellies and the legs are used for compost. Oh, they're that bad. Well. Some of they're, them depends. they're worth they're not worth hanging on to for any to make anything i we have gotten some things in our fiber mill from we pro process from people all across the united states mm -hmm. we've done southern california clear through indiana illinois and um north carolina mississippi so we're branching off most of our work comes out of texas because there's a lot more alpaca producers in texas than oklahoma right now and so we produce their uh, their yarn, their stuff in the yarn, mm -hmm. melted sheets or whatever. And but we're going to start making our own products to sell as well. Pasture condition would also determine Correct. your oh, quality. Okay. That they're I was in, wondering what they they're in. They mean, uh -huh. grass and hay, uh -huh. alfalfa, uh -huh. orchard grass mix is one of the ones they really like, but. And that produces a different quality. Well, just your pasture quality, if they're getting stickers or stuff like that. Oh, know, that in the wool, in the fiber, right. It makes it hard right. to uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yes. The belly and the legs, they're getting all the wear, you know, mm -hmm. at, as far as. So is what quality coarseness is this? You know, because obviously these are very different. This, this is really grade five. Grade five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this right here is uh, uh, they wrote it down for me. This is alpaca and bamboo. Okay, 90% alpacas. You uh -huh. know how soft it is. Yeah, it's kept it softest. That bamboo adds a little texture to it. Uh -huh. This was manufactured out in our fiber mill. Okay, and so this is uh, the best. Is this a one? Uh, that's probably a grade a two. A two. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So you can actually you can make more this products soft. with a grade <laughs> three. This this one this right is here. like soothing kind of. <laughs> this, is, this is alpaca and merino wool. Uh huh. I you know you can feel the wool. I think in yes, this you can. you can feel the wool the as opposed to how smooth that feels. This uh, uh, Amy dyed this 100% uh, uh -huh. alpaca. You can uh -huh. feel it. Yes. And this one here is. Oh, this is Angora rabbit uh, and alpaca. Ooh, wow. So that's very soft. Yeah, and that's a natural color. These, oh, this has been dyed. The uh, alpacas have, uh, I think it's 26 natural colors. And mm -hmm. this was done by putting a black and white. We call it the barber pole. Uh-huh. And then we also, this is called coarse fun yarn. Uh -huh. or we call it rug yarn for short. Right. And what it is, is a cotton, it's a mop yarn that's got alpaca spun around it. Okay. People, okay. Oh, I can feel the hard. Yeah. Um, and people take there. this and they make uh, rugs. Uh, they also make trivets. They make mm -hmm. crafty mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of stuff that uh, can be done. We... Uh, I enjoy, and the ladies that work in the fiber mill, they're very good. They uh, they enjoy seeing the final products. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting more and more where we are very honest with people and say, I know this is, uh, you know, uh, fluffy, but uh, fluffy, you know, we've got it, you know, fluffy's dead now and I have to have something from her. Okay, it's not, you won't want to put it up against your skin, but we'll do it for you. And because people are very sentimental. Uh, and so they bring they bring you fiber that from a dead, one of their animals that's that been, died. Yeah, that's been sheared. Right. And they died. And then right. they're like, oh, we've got to have something from this. Now, uh, but we're very honest. We don't think it'll make, we'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had someone bring us uh, some llama and that had been felted. Uh, I mean, it was, it gotten wet and felted. And mm -hmm. I said, we can't do this. So there are some things we can't do, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you know, if you're 
if you want it done, we usually can do it. But if it's going to, if, if it's too trashy, it takes us longer to clean out our machines after we've processed it, then uh, we make money off of it. So it's right. not worth it to us. Right. So um, you need to come see our file. I do. I do need to come see it. I'm incredibly interested in all of this now. Um, okay. I have like a bazillion questions. I feel like we got a little bit out of order on some things though. So you you started out with these, you had two alpacas. When you brought them here, did you already have more or oh. did you just bring the two and then oh, you started? We had 26 by the time. You had 26. Here. Okay, so you, had, you brought a lot of them here. And um, are they hardy enough that you could just stick them in a trailer and, mm -hmm. and bring them? Yes. And because of the, their feet um, being soft, being like toes as opposed to hooves, does it require them to have different, uh, to walk on or are they, do, are they adapting? They, do they adapt? No, they, to, I mean, is it okay? It's, if, it, they just, they're not as hard on the ground, uh -huh. uh, which we're into regenerative agriculture. So we actually like, we're going to run the, I should let you talk about this. We're going to uh, let the cattle go in and graze first and uh -huh. they'll break up the ground. They Then we'll have the alpacas and the uh, poor sheep and uh -huh. until we get more and the one goat. They'll go in behind them. And so then once they're through. Right, because the cattle, they just, they eat down, but the she sheep mm -hmm. eat at the ground. They'll eat the, yes. they'll eat. Right. Almost uh -huh. anything, uh -huh. in the field, uh -huh. so they'll get rid of some of the things you don't want in the pasture. Right. And we'll do all that with rotational grazing and temporary fencing, so that we can move them and keep them where we want them, as they and control our pastures better that way. Right. And so, how much land are you talking about? We have right now. We have about 105 acres. Okay. So, how many acres, like? Uh, does it take for one for alpaca? alpaca. You can uh -huh. want a one acre if it's good pasture land. You can have ten to twelve. Okay, but if okay. it's not very good pasture land, then you don't. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got uh, how many cattle? Now? With the thirty-five, we've got about thirty-five head of cattle right now. And so mm -hmm. Pretty close to the number that works well. Right, what we've got. And the alpaca and cattle are do they? We keep them separate for the most part, but okay. they can graze together. For the most part, mm -hmm. there are not going to be any issues there. Right, right. So um, I know like with cattle, you have to treat for certain diseases, you know, vaccinate, all of those kind of things. Are alpaca susceptible to the same kinds of diseases or do they require other um, they, care? They have to have CDT shot mm -hmm. uh, every year. But for the most part, it's parasites we have to worry about. Yeah. Them. Well, if if it's because of sheep and they're eating at the ground, so anything down there, like uh, that, was always a thing. As worms, especially, would could just go right through your herd yes. really quickly. And exactly, yeah, that's part of the rotational grazing. Right. Yes, food. we always yeah. had to do that yeah. too with yeah. sheep. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you you're talking about your uh, manufacturing. Is that on the same, the 105 acres mm -hmm. out there? We have a building that we have a, uh, we have a fiber mill in it. Uh -huh. We have a, we call it the farm store because we have the boutique in Duncan. We uh -huh. have a farm store out there and we have our offices uh, where Case and I work out of. And um, so the, the fiber time. mill is, that's people bring you the fiber and you process it. Mm -hmm. And so how many, uh, different steps are there? I mean, I, I know you have to clean it, but there's probably machines that do something to it to yes. prepare it for the next step. So what what does that process I, look like? I'll do it very quickly because <laughs> it's I'm I sure can, I'm sure it's a lot. Yeah. It comes in at um we could sort and braid it, uh, but we it goes to the tumbler, which is goes outside it tumbles, the right. dirt rolls right. out. Uh -huh. Then it goes to the washing machine. We wash at 160 degrees for alpaca, and 180 degrees for sheep. And sheep uh, wool has to be washed 
uh, we call it rinses, but uh, and we don't scour. We just use high temp and uh, mild soap. Do so, the do the does the merino are these? Is that the kind of sheep you have yes. that produces the merino? I have a merino uh, ranch. I buy my merino from. Okay. Um, does it have lanolin in it? Like like this sheep? Okay. And is that what you're trying to get out of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it washes it, goes to the drying rack, then it goes to the picker, and it picks it apart, goes okay. away, and then it comes out, it goes to the separator, and the sep we have a double separator, there's only a few of those in the United States, and so it separates it twice, the heavy fibers fall down, and trash, and then from the separator, it goes to the carter, and at the carter, it becomes, you make it droving, uh, or a bat to make belted sheets, or this coarse spun yarn. And then from there... If so you have a machine that will, you tell it, I want coarse spun yarn, yeah. I want batting. Yeah, two of those now. Okay. I bought another one okay. this year. And so then from there, it goes to the, if it's roving, it's going to be made into yarn. Then okay. it goes to the draw frame, and it starts aligning the fibers back up. And then it goes to the spinner. We have a 12 uh, head spinner and it'll spin the yarn, and so you'll get like one of these. Then it goes to the plier to be plied together, then to the steamer, and then it's either made into a, uh, what we call a cake or a skein. Okay. And so, yeah, you need to come see it. I, yeah, yeah. So I'm imagining a spinning wheel, okay? I Right, yeah. but I mean, I'm thinking about people watching who don't have any idea. I'm, you know, and that's, you know, you know, it's taking the, the fluff and making it skinny and thin, right? And making a thread, like a thread out of and that's it. That's what these machines do. Okay. Is that, what, what part is that? Is that where you, you said spinning or is that where it was roving? It's, they, they're taking roving and making it into the thin uh -huh. here. Okay. So they're spinning it. And then if they want, uh, more than, they want, you know, a two ply, three ply, four ply, uh -huh. then they go to the plier. We ply them put those that number um, mm -hmm. that strands together. Okay, okay, all right. So that kind of helps yeah. me have a little bit of a picture. I know it's not anywhere close to actual what it's actually like, but you know, that's a that. So if you're going to make batting, where does it go through the same, and then how does batting differ? At what point does does the batting at the become carter, the product at the carter we okay. decide if it's going to be made into yarn if it's going to be made into uh coarse spun yarn or if it's going to be made into a bath uh, and does that just depend on an order someone has yes or okay yeah when we're doing it for our own stuff we go okay this is grade four and we're going to make inserts so um and we were going to bat that yeah, and, and cut out. out. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Exactly. Okay. So, Very good. Yeah. Part of what we're doing is uh, we all also uh, have agritourism, mm -hmm. and that's really done well. Uh, we've had last year, we had a group of 55 come through from mm -hmm. Iowa. From Iowa. Uh -huh. Then they the came city. here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get on this little tour uh tour to duncan here and uh make this a, a multi-stop uh, event for people absolutely and we had uh 84 come through uh that was a children's group and their parents uh -huh. and that was the largest we've ever had we usually average about uh 15 20 oh, yeah. and we offer a lunch uh from our own meat we try to do that mm -hmm. and, and we'll cook hamburgers or taco bar or something like that just to give people an option especially out there there's not a lot of places to eat if right, they're not in, right. in the neck of the woods and so oh that's what's next a food <laughs> truck <laughs> i was gonna say uh, well we got a lot in, there's a lot in of work. Them, exactly yeah. i'm kind of messing with you yeah, but I, uh, <laughs> yeah so they mentioned agritourism so i wanted to show these things off um i recently stopped at um a welcome center here in Oklahoma, and the ladies who worked there were very eager to hand out these new, these brochures that Oklahoma Agritourism has produced. These are beautiful. Shout out to Oklahoma Agritourism. We'll have to um, 
uh, what is that tag them we will tag them in our comments and so they'll see but um this one is a guide to horticulture and it's beautiful and everything doesn't pertain today no offense horticulturists <laughs> of Oklahoma this one is called a guide to animals in Oklahoma and I was flipping through it and actually there's a table of contents at the front and it's the state is divided into regions and in southwest well, looky there, the very first one on the list is crossed arrows, alpacas, and fiber mill. And if you open to that page, they have a full page in this book dedicated to crossed arrows, which is so cool. I'm so excited for you guys whenever I saw this. This is very awesome. But wait, there's more. <laughs> this one is called a guide to teachable moments in Oklahoma and I actually grabbed this one because when you open it in the front and look at southwest the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center is the very first one mentioned and so I flip it open and I find us and we have this little half page thing right here and just so you know it's nice agriculturism um we would have loved to have submitted a new photograph um so next time you guys put one of these out we got you we got something new but when you turn the page boom here is crossed arrows two full pages two full pages and most of most of them in this book are half page so I was very impressed that you guys got two full pages this particular page I'm guessing this is a bin yes. out there at your um the what you call it the farm store, store. Farm store. Yeah. I mean that is so cool so shout out to you guys and agritourism for making these great brochures. I love it that you guys are a part of that. I'm I'm just kind of curious, like um, at what point did you like is has this always been the vision? Or at what point did you decide, you know what? I think we can really do something cool with all of this. I think her teaching background leads to some of the agritourism that uh -huh. wanted to educate the people. And right. said it's, the alpacas lend themselves that way. Also, mm -hmm. it's big in the alpaca industry to have different uh, educational, educational, and they're used trips, sometimes at wedding venues and different things like that. So oh, okay. So their size and their docile nature kind of leads to being where they can do some different things mm -hmm. where you wouldn't do that with every kind of animal. Right. Well, so. the teachable moments, um, they have little um, uh, little things that go. And so on yours, it's a hands-on is the little, uh, what you call it, this little category that it's in hands-on and then fiber Yeah, are the two categories that you guys are Here's an example. Of. When we have the kids, uh, kids groups come out, we give them options that they can do a craft. This is felt and sew. And uh, okay. And so you take felt and you this natural soap that was made by my daughter-in-law and myself. <laughs> and uh shout out to you, Brittany. <laughs> there and, you go. Uh, and so and they just take it and they learn to felt mm -hmm. and they make their own little soap to take home and they use this instead of using a washcloth. Because it's oh, like a washcloth on it. Yes. And um, wow. And so it just stays on the outside uh, of the soap? Yes. So that's one project. We so, do. wait, what happens when the soap starts getting smaller? It gets smaller and it is. And so you'll have it get loose inside. No, nope. it just, just kind of shrinks with, shrinks it. with it. And then you, um, mm -hmm. and then when it's finished, you know, you have this little piece of belt. Uh -huh. uh, do with whatever you want. And I so, would probably just hold it in my hand and rub it. I really <laughs> like the way this stuff feels. It's very soothing. This is kind of cool. Wow. So that is fun. But uh, like uh, Casey, uh, one of the things we have a, a five year plan. And um, one of the things that we know we have to do is that we have to really start working with our soil because the, I hate to say it, we've never recovered from the dust bowl. 
I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And it's everything's been overgrazed, over fertilized, and uh, so more natural regenerative approach. Right. To what we're trying right. To do. So I'll let you yeah. lead into that. Yeah. Uh, is that what you're? That's uh, what the let's, Yeah. Let's go through this because I think this will be very interesting for the uh, viewers. So just with the regenerative approach, you're going through and not using a lot of chemicals and pesticides and because anything that ends in a side is something that's meant to kill. I mean, that's, right, right. that's the purpose of it. And there's a use for them, but when they get overused, you it kills other things or it takes more to, to get rid of what you're trying to do. And when you can find a natural approach to it, it just usually works better. And mm -hmm. so then the regenerative approach looks at, you know, letting the animals work together to do some of that and get rid of some of the problems that you have and getting rid of, you know, the weeds or whatever it is by bringing in sheep and goats or, you know, another kind of animal to get rid of something else, mm -hmm. but especially if it's a natural animal to this environment. In this right. Area. So. right. So do you want to go through this? Sure. Uh, okay, here we go. Well, See, your, about 50, oh, yeah. it says over 50 on there, Brenda. <laughs> he might need to change uh -huh. that to about 50. Approximately. Approximately. <laughs> if, if you're watching. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, and what's a, what's a baby doll sheep? I'm. Is that like what the breed is called? Yeah, yes, they're uh, old English South Down. Okay, and they're uh, I had South Down at one time. They're so cute. Yes, they are. Except they're a little for, moody, but well, Mace is Mace wants to butt you now, <laughs> and uh, he did knock me down one day, and I wonder the next day I was sore. I thought it's because I'd actually done physical work, and right. I thought. <laughs> Oh, he knocked you down. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so that's what we where we're at now with the alpacas, the sheep. Uh, right now we're using a hundred acres and like the roughly thirty five head of cattle. Right, right. And uh, all our meat processing is done by outside vendors uh -huh. that we're trying to work to sell. Yeah. It's all grass fed, grass finished. And that that's the Angus. That's all that that's all the meat that you're processing correct. at this time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And then we also have our fiber mill that we've talked about with, you know, processing other people's fiber and turning it into to whatever kind of goods they want. And how did you guys market yourselves to to that so that people know to bring their wool to you? The uh, alpaca industry, uh, we've been a part of it for 15 years, I guess. And, and I tell people for a long time I wanted to do this. And so we advertise, we go to shows. Mm, I mean, okay. we still play okay, some yeah. shows, but we're uh, our next group of babies, I think will do well. But this year uh, I'm only going to the shows because uh, get our name out there, mm -hmm. pick up fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just marketing mm -hmm. and word of mouth. A lot of work, I'm sure. A the impact industry is pretty tightly knit too. Uh -huh. So once you get in with certain... I'm on the fiber national fiber committee. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> serving on boards, doing things like that, you really have to network. If you're in the show circuit, then you you know you make those connections. You mm -hmm. have your animals mm -hmm. bred other places that lends itself to bringing in fiber from those other markets. Right. So, so. Right. Okay. Let's let's go to this next one here. Oh, go ahead, Chris. So that's our five year plan with where we're at with crossed arrows and uh -huh. then going into the animals our fiber mill and our meat processing. Okay. We basically have three different value streams or or separate divisions. On the regenerative agriculture, does the Department of Agriculture here in Oklahoma, do they have subsidies and or do they assist you in any way? I, I mean, my dad, my parents have 160 acres. And so I know Department of Agriculture helps uh, with a lot Correct. of different things. Yeah, there's there's some pushes, I know, with uh, with that to do some cross fencing, which lends into that, along with water, well, just, you know, mm -hmm. well drilling. So that mm -hmm. you've got access in different places because that's one of the deals with the rotation. Being able to feed the water out of one spot and not have it to constantly move your water source. Right. Do you guys have a pond on your land? We, we have, do. We have, we have a tank. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we have a spring fed pond. Okay. But okay. we have we're, we've got a well also that we can that we're trying to start setting a hub and spoke system off of to, to rotate around. Right. So. Right. Okay. And 
I will uh, I will be the cranky <laughs> brand. One of the things that uh, we've been uh, big ag mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. pointing in trying to get a bunch of the money from USDA instead of it going to farmers and ranchers. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we have noticed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know, that's one of the things that we're trying to spread that it should be more of a bottom-up approach. Right. And you should be able to produce, we should be able to produce here in Stevens County. Regionally. Mm -hmm, that anything we need, food produce, meat. So you don't have to worry about where it's Where your food's from, coming from. Where right. what who processed it because if you're relying on the four big meat processing plants you saw what happened during COVID right and right. uh and I'm one of these people that if I was going to target the United States I know exactly I target the food supply mm -hmm. and you shut down all four of them what are you going to do then mm -hmm. America right well um I was doing a trail talk about um the pork industry and that, yeah, I mean, that is a great example right there. All of the small pork producing family, mm -hmm. it was it, their family. Sure. It's a family business. It's like what you guys are doing. I was just thinking about like when you were talking, you know, dairies, yeah. same way. The dairies, there was a kindergarten teacher here in Duncan whose family owned a dairy and all the kindergartners would take <laughs> a field trip and go out to the dairy and that dairy is gone. I bet when... My kids were in school probably some of the very last years. And that was like, you know, the early 2000s. They probably haven't had a dairy out there for 20 years now. And just watching those places be taken over, just consumed by the big. They call it big ag. <laughs> big ag. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, I, I find that to be a, kind of a, it's disheartening to me to see people who love agriculture, you know, who want to produce things from the land and, and in a natural way and, and provide for their region, yes. unable to do that. And then it struck me when you were talking that you guys are here on the ground floor, probably, of uh, a it's a different kind of, I mean, alpaca, it's, it's not super common, uh, over, overdone, you know, or anything like that. And like, is that going to be, are you, do you guys have a big fat target on your back for, you know what I'm saying? For, with a big egg coming in, or is this kind of niche enough that it, you, you can probably be able to hold off, hold what, them off. What are the, uh, Excuse me, Casey. What uh, one of the things that I might be uh, chasing a big old rabbit uh, here or something. <laughs> Casey, like, well, don't get her started. Yeah. Um, one of the things we raised red Aberdeen Angus. The yes. Aberdeen had been bred back down to the original size, and I laugh and tell people that the oh cattlemen make fun of my cattle because they got short legs and. I look at them and go, you don't eat those legs, do you? <laughs> because we can put more on mm -hmm. the ground mm -hmm. and we get more beef per carcass, mm -hmm. according to my research. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's a it's a regional approach, mm -hmm. knowing where your food's coming from and trying to supplement that and and be be the county. But right. it's it's not a one of the quotes that we use is we can't save the world, we can save Stevens County. I love that. That's good. <laughs> I mean, but really what you're saying ties into what the, the Chisholm Trail, the cattle yes, drives, correct. they they went with the Longhorn cattle because they did have long legs and they were very sturdy and they could walk for miles and they could outwalk a Hereford or an <laughs> Angus of those days with the, who had the naturally short legs. And so, um, you know, and, and I always tell even my the students who come here, it, the cattle drives were all about the money. Mm -hmm. That was that was the whole motivation behind the cattle drives. And you know, money it still does a lot of that. It right. motivates a lot of people to do a lot of things. So, okay, I think we've <laughs> we will move on now because I think we could go round and round on that one. Um, 
Okay, here's more about your five year plan. Here, yeah, here's the five year plan as we try to increase and get our own meat processing on site. And to do that, we have to increase a number of cattle. And we to do that, we have to have more land. So right. That's part of the five year plan is to increase land and create increase. Is there 2,000 acres of available land in Stevens County? Um, it would be hard to get some yes. of it, but there's, you know, it's not, it's a lot, a lot more valuable than it used to be kind mm -hmm. of a deal. So mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to make some of that work. And mm -hmm. there's other ways to do that. There's some co-op systems with, with letting, you know, having co-ops to produce other meat and, right. you know, right. to offset some of it right. as it comes in. Yeah. Like that's a, it's a five year, but it's, it may push out farther than that to make some of that happen, but mm -hmm. it's, that's our long-term well, you, goals, you know. You have to set yeah, some have, number out correct. there and, and start moving towards it. If correct. you don't get there, then it's yeah. not five years, it's yeah. more, but yeah. yeah. And eventually, like I said, we want to have other meat on site, chicken, raised eggs, all that kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. I said, to be a, if you can go to a, a regional, food distribution, then you don't have to worry as much about big ag. And when you have major shutdowns in the system, you have a chance at survival. Right. And, you know, that's a right. strong term to use, but we, you know, it, it can happen when when you have these large systems that are producing hundreds of, mm -hmm. you know, they're producer, well, they're 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 processing hundreds of heads of cattle an hour through mm -hmm. these large. And I would know. just go with maybe quality versus quantity too. Right. Yes. Like, you know, yes. not yes. even yes. not even just surviving or whatever a regional thing, but just the quality of the products Correct. that you're able to produce. Yeah. Because yeah. it is a much and smaller the life of that animal that's yes. gone through that exactly. Yeah. Now. If you you know where that animal came from and what it's been through to get there versus it's not one standing on a uh, standing in a Feed lot, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. that's uh, the only life that it's needed, good was, yeah, yes. it's getting the manure, yeah, yes. it's getting uh, it's able to stand in a Correct. more fresh and it's natural environment where yeah. it can roam and you mm -hmm. know, exactly, yeah. All right, so increase all of the fiber mm -hmm. mill on site meat processing. So, would um, like the increases in the fiber mill and on site meat processing. Do you think that would take up the majority of the 100 acres that you currently have? Oh yeah, we're we're, we're going to run out of room mm -hmm. very soon. Mm -hmm. That and that's just with the processing. And some of that parts. would need to be in different areas anyway, probably just yes. for logistics. Yes. So mm -hmm. that we, just kind of makes sense as mm -hmm. far as tell shipping me. and receiving and all yeah. that goes with it. Tell about our tour that we went in Georgia and um, what Through we the, yeah what why the, don't yeah which. I mean, about how, how yeah. they zero waste. Okay, yeah. okay. They, uh -huh. yeah. Even their uh, they use raw hides and make natural raw hides that go into dog chews and all that kind of stuff, so that they're not dyed and have chemicals right. added to them. Right. Just different. Oh, know. I love. I just so. love <laughs> when people get creative yes. and they just, and then they meet with other people and share their creativity. Yes. And then, I mean, so you guys get ideas, and then you make yes. make it your own, and you end up with something entirely different, or just make it. Hallow you know, candles. They take the beef. Yes. Hallow, that's one of our things in the zero waste is mm -hmm. to eventually make our own candles made out of beef tallow, and then they're scented with essential oils so that it's a natural. You and, know, and, and you know who the original zero waste were, right? The Native yeah, Americans. They correct. used every part of that <laughs> buffalo. And what you're describing are the very things. They even made soap out of, I think it's like the brain and the potash uh, Casey, together to make the... Casey and I are members of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, my grandfather, his great-grandfather, was an original enrollee in the Choctaw tribe. Really? Mm -hmm. What did was he part of the removal? No. Was that, okay. His grandfather uh -huh. came out of Mississippi. Okay, part of the Mississippi. Yeah. So so that's another thing I'm like super interested in, but I will not I will not chase that one. I'm gonna stay on target here. <laughs> and he was uh, uh my maiden name is Sanner, S-A-N-N-E-R. Okay. And uh he was the first postmaster of Bokishi 
I think it's Bokishi, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. over in Eastern Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And the story was they all came here uh, and they stopped uh, the original, her original Indian land, my baby brother bought, but uh, they stopped there because the uh, grass was up to here, mm -hmm. there was a creek, there was deer, there was all kinds of game. And now I look at all mm -hmm. that land and I go, we got some work to do mm -hmm. to get it back that way. Oh yeah, oh yes, for sure. Um, okay, um, so I think we've talked about the regener regenerative, that's not easy to say, by the way, <laughs> agricultural <laughs> practices. Uh, so your on-site meat processing, this looks like we would sell every part. Correct. Yeah. Because direct I don't know consumer. if I want to know what you make lip balm out of or not. <laughs> no, we're, it just works. Okay. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. We don't have to know what part of the animal it came from. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I just, I love all this. The fiber mill increase the capabilities. Oh, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. To make socks, gloves, insoles, et cetera. And you brought some socks here as examples. Yeah. These socks here are made in the United States. Uh -huh. I belong to a co-op that uh, natural fiber producers, it's actually gone bankrupt, but uh, I have a ton of these left to sell. Uh, feel how warm those are. Ooh, yeah, y'all be wishing you had some of these on the last few days. <laughs> these were made in Peru, uh -huh. uh, and these are what we'll probably try to uh, strive they're very comfortable, they're warm, mm -hmm. they're soft. Uh, of course, our moisture wicking and yes. the right, the whole the whole deal. So uh, this is our uh, like I said, we should be making these within mm -hmm. three weeks. Oh, okay. These. This is socks. socks as um, depending on money flow mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and how much the machine costs. We may try to start it towards the end of the year. That's my goal. Okay. Now this says incorporate a weaving studio. Is this kind of an artisan uh, yes, part of the... <laughs> that, that's yeah. what uh, I would like to do. Uh, Casey's making, but I, I bought a, uh, a, a weaving uh, a, to weave. I haven't ever used it yet because mm -hmm. <laughs> I have all these great plants and I, I got a lot on my plate. Right, right. And, I go back and forth. One of the reasons, and I tell people, I am almost a zealot for natural fiber products. Mm -hmm. This is 100% cotton. Mm -hmm. I had breast cancer uh, in March. It'll be 20 years. But um, there, and I always said I was away from here. There were people dying of cancer all out of, uh, I graduated in 1974, 1972, 73, 74, 75, tons of people. I mean, I graduated 303 mm -hmm. and I know of 33 people that uh, without, that was the last time I counted. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I had breast cancer, but uh, it's something you think about. Your The whole environment mm -hmm. affects your body. Mm -hmm. And if you're, uh, if you're wearing uh, polyester, polyester is actually a, a form of diesel. Right, I was gonna say it's a petroleum byproduct. <laughs> so so uh, it's, you start thinking more of that the older you get. Mm -hmm. And if it's, uh, I read, I showed Casey the article over at uh, the Wichita Mountains, the lake over there, they tell you not to eat the trout because it's got too much mercury in it. Yeah. And, and so the older I get, Mm -hmm. And maybe too being born in that generation, mm -hmm. you know, where the hippies were, you start thinking more and more about that. right, right, yeah. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the dryer balls is to oh, not yes. use fabric softener. Yeah, uh -huh. I quit using fabric softener because bounce that's chemicals. Uh huh. I probably shouldn't say that name. But <laughs> that uh, the dryer sheet company <laughs> yes. that shall remain nameless. That uh, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I quit using them, and I use. These in there, uh huh, and, and these soften your your clothes. Yeah, your clothes. bounces. Do you know how it works? It uh, all I know is I throw them in my dryer and <laughs> and uh, they uh, bounce around uh -huh. and it wicks the moisture out. Uh huh. And does it, it absorb static electricity yep. somehow? Too? Yes, somehow it does. We'll add essential oils to them also uh -huh. and give them that give that way. It, yeah, that way. Not part of what the softener and the sheets are doing is. I like it. 
So that is that's why I tell people I may be going straight alpaca soon, y'all. <laughs> And then the zero waste, which we've hit on just a little bit. Correct. Um, wow, yeah, I love all this. So you have ideas for the leather, the byproducts, the tallow, visceral yes. products for meat processing. For, oh, for composting. Yes. Okay. If you're not using in the meat processing for a small processor, if you're not using all these products and, mm -hmm. and finding ways to eliminate waste, you're you're giving away profit, you know, and oh, if it's cost effective. You really need to try to do a lot that's of things. A really smart way to look at it. Yes, I mean, very. The yeah. small process. You're again. You're competing against. You know, if you're doing forty head a week versus people are doing four hundred head an hour, you right. have to find ways to be cost effective. Yes. To be yes, or you can't compete. I mean, can't compete anyway, but you have to be effective and make it. A cost effective version of what you can sell to mm -hmm. consumers. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then the regenerative uh, agriculture, we've also hit on that. No till farming practices. Yes. My dad and brother have talked really? about uh -huh, some of that in their uh, wheat field, you know. Um, it doesn't disturb the soil as uh -huh. much so that you can, can make a big difference when you've got crops growing all year long and you, you haven't just. You haven't disturbed that soil just on dirt runoff into creeks and everything else. Mm -hmm. And what goes with the dirt is all the chemicals and the fertilizers and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that uh, our Department of Agriculture here in Oklahoma has been helping uh, farmers with uh, with some of that yeah. the no till practice uh, because I mean it you know it's a it's a it's a new way of thinking and yeah. you, you have to be you have to convince them that it's worth it. Perfect. You know, and the Noble Foundation is doing a lot of yes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They're, they're pushing a lot of regenerative ag over there. So. That's that's fantastic. That's a yes. great place. Okay, now we're here on alpaca etiquette, which mm -hmm. I really love. This little slide, I thought this thing was so fun. Are these two different kinds, or are they at different phases of the shearing and growing out process? No. Oh. The, Go ahead. Oh, okay. The the one on. Uh, over here, okay. as I don't know if it's left or right, okay. <laughs> Sorry. that this is a wakaya. Okay. And they're more of the teddy bear looking uh -huh, ones. Uh -huh. The ones over here on my left are called Surrey. So alpacas, there's either Surrey alpacas, which my husband says those are Rastafarian looking. <laughs> and then you got the wakaya. We have wakaya, we don't have Surrey. Okay. So they're like their hair um, kind of. Uh, what is that called? Uh, dread? Yeah. It kind of twists like that, like a dreadlock. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. But so do, is that kind of, uh, can you do all the same things with that alpaca fiber? Uh, Surrey fiber is actually heavier than Wakaya. Okay. And it, uh, and actually they make beautiful rugs. They're cool to the touch. Oh. Uh, the girls will tell you sometimes it's a pain to because our machines are designed really to do wakaya more. Oh, uh, well, okay. And, but they're um, learning. So that's a it's kind of a, a similar but different industry. You, just using the two different kinds of fibers yes. because they they're all alpacas. Famous. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the things that I like to always tell people: don't touch the alpaca's head because they want to pet it like a dog. You can rub its neck. Mm -hmm. and they like that and they don't like you to uh, so like the that. shows that you were talking about do they have both types yes uh we're going not this weekend but next weekend we're going down to wichita falls it's called the texo land show it's texas oklahoma louisiana new mexico it's mainly texas and a few people from oklahoma uh, and, and that show will be both surrey alpacas and wakaya so interesting Interesting. So they seem like, as I mean, they're wild, right? Or they're wild in South America mm -hmm. and they've been domesticated, but they run like huge herds up in the mountains. Right. And so they, as I tell people, these are farm animals. So they may be cute, they may be mm -hmm. all this other stuff, mm -hmm. but 
it's a farm animal. So yeah. you got to remember that. Yeah. They're not there for you, like a puppy to come up and for you to love on. Mm -hmm. And if it's doing that, it's probably a bottle fed baby and and all oh, bets are off. And what they're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Be a boomer when yes. it's an adult. Yeah. yeah. And um, so as they uh, actually, Surrey's are, are smaller than Lakaya's. Okay. And this picture, it's two babies. Oh, okay. Okay. And the babies are called Kriyas again. And, and spell that for me. C-R-I-A. C-R-I-A. Kriya. Okay. And does it matter which? It's, uh, no. That's okay. Both of them. And Kriyas are, uh, and then when they're six months old, you can start showing them at a show. Mm -hmm. So six months to 12 months, they're called uh, juveniles. Okay. And then 12 to two are yearlings and then two, you know, they're mature after. All two. right. So um, do the male and female compete against each other? No. Okay. Different classes, different divisions. Um, what are the male and female called? Are they called cows or are they called ewes or? It's called uh, the male's. I don't know the, uh, you know the they're called sires. Okay, uh, they're the breeding, and, and then, then the females the are dams. dams. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I always like to know animal names too. <laughs> <laughs> I teach about animals around here. I like to have the proper terminology. So we tell people uh, we register these animals. Well, I've registered all of them, but about a few because mm -hmm. I knew they weren't show animals. I've gotten more picky. Help the Alpaca Association won't like me to say that, mm -hmm. but if you know you're never going to show them and they're only going to be for fiber or whatever, then it's kind of expensive to register. To register each one of yeah, them. Yeah, it costs about 80 bucks. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much an Well, it adds up you have like 13 yeah, a exactly, year. Exactly, exactly. And uh, so my two, I didn't register two of them. One of them, his fiber is very, very good. I probably uh -huh. could have registered him and for walking police, but I just didn't do it. Uh, but anyway, I've gotten off track. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. We're just, um, I like the, this whole, do you guys have these posted out there? We the, just go through so, it. Yeah. When, when we have big groups come through, this is one of yeah. the we like to show them just before they get out in the field. Well, the right. I think, I mean, that's, that's good. So they're they're running around out there do they have like you know grass in their fiber and all that kind of stuff whenever they're yes do they like to roll around in the dirt yes do they all do. that sort of thing good i like a good <laughs> rolling in the dirt kind of animal <laughs> they're farm animals exactly exactly that's what i i think that that's pretty awesome do they produce any kind of a lanolin or no oily no interesting no, it's just the sheep. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what is their purpose? Like in South America, when they're running wild, what what is that? They're for the fiber and they also eat. And, to, and for eating. Yeah, white is the uh, dominant color. Okay. And so here in America, we've almost bred. Our alpaca fiber is, for the most part, very good. Mm -hmm. And... So, because we don't let ours run wild, yeah, they breed yeah. with whoever they want, right? Uh, we do selective breeding, mm -hmm. but uh, in South America, well, in Australia and New Zealand, they have a huge meat market as well. Ah. So, um, and if you're like us and have a fiber mill, we like the white because it's easier to dye the white, right? To make what colors uh -huh. you to want, make things uh -huh. like this, yeah, beautiful. Uh -huh colors like that although this is a lovely this it really is a beautiful color right here yeah we like uh that. processed someone's uh last week and then the picker room i know i said that had a lavender hue to the gray oh, that is beautiful mm, wow that's nice that is nice and then um here we have oh the alpaca versus the llama I really liked mm -hmm. these uh, these little comparisons on here too. Yeah, the alpaca is significantly smaller, about half the size, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Or even a little bit smaller than that. Llamas are used for uh, guard animals with the alpacas a uh -huh. lot of times. Oh, uh, okay. We chose not to go that route. We have uh, donkeys mm -hmm. on for the outside 
security perimeter. Mm -hmm. My husband's military, like I told you, the security, the, so the security donkeys yeah. are so on patrol. We, yeah, we have four on one side and two on the other north end. Uh -huh. And so they really, they keep the coyotes at bay. Uh -huh. And uh, then we have, uh, we have three guardian uh, Great Pyrenees. Okay. Uh, we have Thelma and Louise. Mm -hmm. There's actually sisters, Thelma mm -hmm. and Louise. Then we have Chief, and Thelma's our best guard dog. Uh, then we have the uh, we have Duke, who's uh, the wonder dog. Um, I, he was given to me at uh, Walmart, mm -hmm. and he has a blue eye and brown eye, uh -huh. and he is he's a mess. That's that's how we describe him. He's a mess. So your Great Pyrenees. I have a question. Um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law have gone camping way up in the mountains in Colorado where there are a lot of sheep, mountain, mm -hmm. the sheep up there. And the sheep, the sh sheep herders or shepherds, I guess, um, the dogs came up to their camp and they said, do not feed them. These dogs are actually wild. They are not, we don't pet them. We don't, you know, do anything to, because they're they have a job and their job is to protect these sheep. Are your dogs that kind, or do, is this like a something in their breed that they naturally protect? They naturally protect. Uh, Thelma is our best guard dog. She's very aloof, even as a puppy. She mm -hmm. didn't want you touching her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll come up to you and sniff you. But she still doesn't want you to touch her. I Nobody see. pets her. Yeah, that's yeah. the other ones you yeah. can usually pet. Uh -huh. Chief, interesting. Uh, we were given Chief, uh, and he's kind of, but all of a sudden it's like it's kicked in, and he wants to be out there with the sisters, mm -hmm. and uh, his bark is, you know, really it's scary. Yeah. If I loud and scary. Yeah. So, That's awesome. And uh, so they tell you, and of course, it's hard when they're little puppies mm -hmm. to leave them alone. Right. But right. we've tried to, but you know, it's uh, they're it's in their instinct to to protect and guard. Uh -huh. most, you know, it's, yeah. You take that out of them by being around them and petting them and everything. But right. if you'll leave them alone, like you're like talking about, mm -hmm. that's they'll generally we've, go to that protection yeah. level. So. We've actually watched uh Thelma and Louise uh, that and Thelma if we have a sick animal or an injured animal or one in labor yeah, yeah. one in labor she goes out there when she's in the pen or the field with that animal wow yeah, she's that's awesome she's amazing that is that is so cool okay so I have one more question crossed arrows <laughs> where'd your name come from uh, my husband Actually, he and I came up with this, mainly he did. Um, the, the crossed arrows is mm -hmm. a symbol of special forces. Okay. And my husband spent 36 years in special forces. Mm -hmm. And the arrow in the middle is for my Indian heritage uh, being Choctaw Native. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got the three arrows. Right. And that's how uh, he basically... We were talking one night and when we were getting our two alpacas. Yes. <laughs> and so we uh, helped, uh, we had a graphic artist help put it together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, that's well, I love happened. the design. I feel like it looks very native, uh, you know, and it, 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 by that token, it looks very Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just, I really, I like the, the, tassels mm -hmm. on there the circle it makes me think of the state flag yeah. a little bit I mean I really I really love your uh oh, thank you logo I guess is what yeah. is what you'd call it um so I I really I love everything about what you guys are doing I love your future plan I love it that um you're not just doing it for yourselves, it's like you guys really care about co the community and, you know, the people in Stevens County. And I mean, even if your products reach across the state or other places, it's still, um, it's so personal for you, you know, and, and just how you're, you're doing things in a way that give back to the land. And, you know, 
then the animals are taken care of in such a, a, a really specific, you know, kind of way. And, and just so many things that, that you're considering as you're making this business bigger and better and making these lovely products. And I mean, I, well, thank you. Yes. Well, congratulations on every, all your successes so far. We, too. we have to uh, mention, we have two people that work with our animals, uh, Gabby and Camden. They're uh -huh. actually a brother and sister. And Gabby's uh, currently, she's taking the, um, What's vet assistant, yeah. yeah, vet assistant program at the Botech. Oh, we're, very nice. We're paying for her to go and uh -huh. learn. She's, uh, but anyway, they're learning a lot, and it's uh, love their job. So, mm. oh that, yeah, right there. Uh, everyone that works for us is right there in that uh, little community area. Mm -hmm. And Casey, uh, then we have the Duncan Tower uh, mm -hmm. Boutique. We call it the Cross Arrows mm -hmm. Boutique, and. And you met Lisa. I and did. Lisa and I went to high school together. We were friends. Uh, okay. And so uh, that's what we always say. That's Lisa. She works there. She's sweet. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I think you guys make a great team. And um, I just feel like you're making this, making everything better. You know, you're taking that land out there and you're making it better. You're, you're, bringing this new, uh, this new product line um, and just the potential for so many more great things and you're employing people from this area. And you know, you're just, you're just giving, giving, giving back. And I just hope the community responds yes. and, you know, really keeps you, keeps everything going. And five years, I hope you're, you're past <laughs> your goals. You know, we talked about falling yes. short of the goals. I hope you reach them before that and, you know, just keep going. Casey has a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, and I mean, you got agritourism has got you guys covered, you know, and I'm just so proud that, that, you're just so well, uh, I don't know, the, everything is so nice in here for you guys. I mean, it's just everything about this is very exciting. Well, we appreciate yeah. you having us yes. here today because uh, I have to admit, uh, we've thought about maybe trying to do a podcast yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm like, but uh, this has been fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's always fun. I'm telling you, all you got to do is be willing to talk. You know, that's it. And just have, I always tell folks, oh, just come on. We're just going to have a chat. I'm just going to chat with y'all. This will be super easy. Hey, we know if we yeah. start, we have a guest. So we have to be a guest on there. That would be awesome. We could do it at the fire mill. Oh, yes. Oh, that'd be fun. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> well, when we uh, sign off, we always say happy trails. So you guys be, go to the Duncan Towers, look up cross arrows on you guys have a website you have a facebook page instagram. we'll put that instagram we'll put that information in the comments if you have questions or anything you guys can ask us we'll pass it on or you can contact them directly and uh let's get behind cross arrows <laughs> and get this show on the road let's do it so um uh, i'm ready when you guys are okay we'll see you guys next time happy, happy trails. Trails.